I get this question a lot. Don't be. When I write my essays, should I put my opinion in the introduction? <laughs> and my answer is usually no. Sometimes it's yes, but usually it's no. If you are taking an English exam. Let's talk. First things first, not all essays are the same. The type of essay you need to write hugely depends on why you're writing it. Are you writing it for the B2 First Cambridge exam? Are you writing it for the C1 Advanced exam? Are you writing it for the proficiency exam? Are you writing it for the IELTS exam? And if you are writing it for an IELTS exam, then what band are you aiming to get? Because all of these things are going to change the way that you write your essay. In addition to all of these English exams, you could be writing an essay as part of your degree at an English speaking university. And the requirements of an essay like this will also be very, very different. So the fact is, there is no English essay. Instead, there are lots of different essays and each one has different requirements. And because of this, different teachers tell different students different things and then everyone has different ideas and then that creates confusion. So please make sure if you are watching YouTube videos like this or you are listening to a teacher, make sure the video or the teacher is talking about the type of essay that you need to write. Otherwise, they could give you the wrong advice and boy oh boy, that would be a terrible thing. So then, why do some teachers suggest that you should write your opinion in your introduction? Well, English in general is what we call a writer responsible language. This means that the writer assumes that there is very little shared knowledge between the reader and the writer. And so because of this, the writer will try and make things as obvious as possible to the reader. And yes, this often involves a lot of repetition. <sighs> to summarize, in a writer responsible language, the writer is responsible for making the reader understand without any ambiguity. As I have said before, this can make English quite repetitive, but it can also make English writing seem a little bit backwards. For example, English essays often contain something called a thesis statement in the introduction. And these thesis statements will state the opinion and the argument that the writer is going to make before they have made it. Uh, think of a thesis statement kind of like a map. It shows the reader where they are going to go before they have been there. It was for this reason that when I was studying at an English speaking university, my professors told me to write my introductions after I had written my essays. This way I could be sure that my introduction would actually reflect what I had written in my essay. <laughs> that way it's an accurate map for the reader. And this can seem kind of confusing because we often think of writing as a linear process starting from an introduction and finishing at a conclusion, but it's not. Oftentimes we develop our ideas as we write and we come to our conclusions during the process of writing, but our writing itself must not reflect this. So yes, English speakers when they're writing their essays in English will usually put their opinion in the introduction, but that does not mean that you should do that when writing your B2 first or your C1 advanced essays. Actually, I think it's a really, really bad idea for you to do that. Uh, yeah. And that's because it can cause you some serious, serious problems. Often students will write a fantastic introduction stating their opinion and the arguments that they're going to make, but then in the essay they completely forget about it and do something different. And that is a disaster and you will lose a lot of marks for doing that. Seriously, imagine buying a map, arriving at your destination and then thinking, oh my god, this map is a map of a completely different place and I'm completely lost. Ooh, do you want your reader to feel that way? <laughs> no. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Seriously, I see this all the time. A student will say one thing in their introduction and then halfway through they will change their mind and then they will create big, big problems for themselves. And I get it. 
That is how we think. We think through speaking, through writing, but that mustn't be reflected in your writing. And if there is a big difference between what you say you're going to do in your introduction and what you say you have done in your conclusion, then you've ruined it. Well done. Essentially, if you have stated your opinion in your introduction, then that hugely restricts what you can say in your essay and, well, now you're just making your life more difficult, aren't you? So don't do it. Instead, in your introduction, just state what your essay will do and specify that you will come to a conclusion at the end. That's it. Just let me know that if I keep reading, I will find a conclusion. That would be pretty useful. And then, when you write your conclusion, you can reflect on what you've written in your essay and say, oh yeah, this is what I think, and then state what you think. But please, do not introduce any new ideas in your conclusion. That's ridiculous, because your conclusion should be summarising the main points and then stating your opinion, not introducing a new point. No, that's not a conclusion. That is a mess. And so, to sum up, no. Do not write your opinion in your introduction. Save it for the conclusion. If you liked the video, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment down below. My name is Toby and this was Smash English.